chickens. Hello to our chicks and chickens. It's good to be here with you. Let's say hello to our families. Hello to my family. Hello to my family. Hello to my family. It's good to be here with you. Hello to my friends. Hello to my friends. Hello to my friends. It's good to be here with you. I'm glad I'm here with you. Hello, hello friends. Hello, it's good to be here with you today. Actually, I already recorded this one and my phone deleted it. So I'm gonna do it again for you. I got my special wings on today and Tank decided that he wanted to have um, some special, yeah, here we go. He was, I had a friend tell me that maybe he should have some special uh, wings too. So he has his special wings on. You wanna sit up? I know you just wanna lay down. Okay, you lay down. Um, and when he's wearing his special wings like that, I call him Tank Urbell. Tinkerbell, a tank, Tinkerbell. Yeah, you think they're fun, huh? You're a good sport. I'm very proud of you. Let's go ahead and sing our Days of the Week song and get started with today's date. And I have so many new things to tell you guys today. But first, our Days of the Week. 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 There's Sunday and there's Monday. There's Tuesday and there's Wednesday. There's Thursday and there's Friday, and then there's Saturday, days of the week. 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 You guys are getting good at that song. Okay, today, today is the number six, or we say the sixth. Today is Monday, April the sixth. Yesterday was Sunday, April the fifth. Today is Monday, April the 6th. Tomorrow is Tuesday, April 7th, or the 7th. Remember, oftentimes we put a th at the end. Sometimes there's other letters we put at the end. English language is always tricky. But today is Monday, April the 6th. And I'm so glad to have you guys here today. Um, I have decided to add a little bit more structure. Um, so that you can be anticipating something we're going to be learning. <clears throat> so we're going to start doing the days of the week as a different theme. Monday, m, m, the letter M, up, down, up, down. M is for Monday. M, m, m. m is also for medicine. And M is for music. So for medicine, to remind you guys, I brought these in. How many of you guys know what this is? Raise your elbow if you know what this is. Yeah, it's a stethoscope. You put it, this part in your ears and you put it so that the little prongies face forward because our eardrums go forward. And you put this part on a heart. I have mine on the PMI, point of maximal index, I believe, something like that. And I can hear my heart going. I wish you guys could hear this on the on your sound. If you have a stethoscope at home or you have parents that have a stethoscope, you can ask to borrow it. Um, it's not a toy, it is a tool, but um, it's a tool that can be very interesting. And so you can listen to your own heart. Speaking of heart, I have a song about heart. I don't know if I can play my drum to this or not. Let's try it. Maybe, we'll see.
When I say yes to the beat in you, we can shine a light right through. I can feel my heart beat beating to the rhythm of the freedom drum. I can feel my heart beat beating to the rhythm of the freedom song. When I say yes to the beat in me, I can set my spirit free. When I say yes to the beat in you, we can shine a light right through. Hey. Remember, this is the way we can clap in sign language without making sound. Nice. Um, so Monday is for medicine and for music. We just sang some music. Another thing we can do with music what I love to do, I used to do this when I would teach Qigong and I would teach um, Aikido to little kids, to younger kids. Um, we would sit in Feza, which is kind of on your feet. You can also sit cross-legged if you like. Um, if you want to sit up, Feza is a, is, a, is a good way to sit. You sit in Feza with your head suspended up to the ceiling. I'll show you from the side. You're kind of, your tailbone. Um, we have our vertebrae in our back, our spine, that goes from the occiput, where our head attaches, all the way down. There's the cervical, there's the thoracic, there's the lumbar vertebrae, and then at the bottom we have our sacrum, and at the very bottom of our sacrum we have our coccyx, or our tailbone. And if we were an animal, we'd have a tail coming off of there. Well, I guess we are an animal, but if we were a different animal, we'd have a tail coming off of there. Um, but that's our sacrum on our coccyx, our tailbones. We're gonna drop our tailbone down to the ground. We're gonna suspend ourselves up, not screen head. Suspend ourselves up like you're kind of hanging from the ceiling. Woo, I did our sound already. And what, oh boy, Hank and Chi are interesting right now. We'll see if they get into a little argument here. Well, we'll hopefully this, this, this music of these gongs will help them be peaceful and calm. So we're gonna sit like this sit with our hands on our knees. Take a deep breath in. And try to exhale the whole length of the sound you hear. And when you hear, when you can't hear any more sounds, you can raise your hand. You ready? Oh boy, she's playing hide and seek. Here we go. either. Your ears might be better than mine. You might hear it longer because sometimes kids' ears can hear higher notes than adults can. Same as animals. Let's do that one more time. I forgot the breath. Take a deep breath in. You don't have to exhale the whole length. Your breath may not be able to, but try your best. Take a deep breath in. I think I cut that gong a little short because the leather hit it, but that's okay. So, M is for Monday and music. So on Mondays, we're going to be talking about medicine and music. On Tuesdays, we're going to be talking about transportation and travel, places that we can travel to. I have a little truck here. I don't know much about different forms of transportation, but I'm going to learn from you guys, and I bet some of you know a lot. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, W is for weather. You ready? It's raining! Okay, not really. I just pretended. But Wednesday is for weather. So we're going to be talking about weather on Wednesdays, and also questions of why. Why do I get a fever when I'm sick? Why is the sky blue? Those kind of questions. If you have any questions, you can have your parents, you can email me or have your parents email me and we can see if we can answer some of those questions. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday is, has a TH. A th, th. It's not just the T, it's a TH. Th, th. So on Thursday, we're going to celebrate and learn about the great outdoors. You know me, I love nature. Um, and also trees, t -t -t trees. Um, and this is um, lavender from my garden from last summer that I picked. It doesn't smell too much anymore. It's a very sweet flowering plant. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday, we're going to be learning about.
about friends and family, some social skills with friends and family and fun things. This, some of you guys may recognize, is me. This is a picture of me and two of my friends that I used to hang with um, in Olympia, Washington. Liam and Delaney, if you're watching this, hello. I miss you guys. Um, it's from a long time ago. They probably look very different now. So, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then we have the weekends, Saturday and Sunday. And Saturday and Sunday, <coughs> here's my S's, is a smorgasbord of select topics with a spattering of silliness for seasoning. Anyway, lots of different topics for Saturday and Sunday. But since today is Monday, I'm going to scoop these things over so we can focus on what Monday's lesson is, which is medicine and music. We already did this music. Music. We're going to do some more music, I believe, in a bit. Ah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to make my letter M. So, I like to be creative and find things around the house or outdoors that I can practice my letters with. For those of you who are older, you can practice writing your letters. You can also practice um, making silly poems that just start with that letter, like Many munchy mice made meatballs. And then draw a picture of that. Just come up with poems like that. If you're younger and you're still learning your letters, one of the things I like to do, and even if you're older and you want to play with them, um, I like to take sticks. You can also do pencils, or you can do um, chopsticks or pens. Think about other straight things that you have in your home that you could use. Um, there's some toys that are like, like blocks. I like sticks because I like the outdoors. And I'm going to make my letter M here. My M goes up and down. Back up a slide. Back up a slide. Whoop. And down like a ladder. Whoop. Up, down, up, down the ladder. M. M is for music. M, M, M. M is for medicine. M, M, M. What else is M for? M is for my favorite. M is for meerkat. M, M, M. I have to keep the meerkat over here because Tank likes to think it's his toy, which it is not. M is also for mountain. M is for mountain. M, m, m. Here is a picture of Mount Rainier. How many of you guys live near or have ever been to or have ever seen a picture of or have ever heard of Mount Rainier? I'll bring it a little closer. Mount Rainier. This is a picture. It's such a beautiful place. And this is an artist's um, illustration of Mount Rainier. This is... Um, one, used to be one of the old posters to advertise for the national parks. Mount Rainier is in the state of Washington. How many of you guys know where you live? You guys live all over the place. This is a map of the United States. I live here in Colorado. I used to live in Washington and I've also lived in Oregon, and I grew up in Missouri. But this is a map of a place called the United States, which is where most of us live. So M is for the mountain in Washington, called Mount Rainier. M is for mountain, M, M, M. M is also for M is for monkey. M, M, M. And I like that my baby monkey. M is also for magic. M is for magic. So I have this book here called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. 
Uh, kind of, it's in alignment with the Harry Potter series. Have any of you guys, wiggle your ears if you've read the Harry Potter series, or at least one of the books in the Harry Potter series. Wiggle your hair if you have um, seen any of the movies of the Harry Potter series. Wiggle your fingers if you've ever just heard of Harry Potter series. And wiggle your chin if you actually don't know what I'm talking about. And that's okay. The Harry Potter series is an older series. It's often for older kids and um, it can be a little bit adult. Um, and some people are into magic and some people aren't. And that's okay. Today, I'm just going to read you some of the fantastic beasts that are the letter M. Um, your homework is to find either more mythical creatures that begin with the letter M, or just mythical creatures in general, or to look up some of these and learn more about them. Draw pictures of them, make sculptures of them, do some research about them, write a report about them. That's your homework. So the first one here is a Mackle Malaclaw. M-A-L-A-C-L-A-W, Malaclaw. The Malaclaw is a land-dwelling creature found mostly on rocky coastlines around Europe. And that's all the information you need to know. You have to do more research. The Manticore. M-A-N-T-I-C-O-R-E, Manticore. The Manticore is a highly dangerous Greek beast with the head of a man, the body of a lion, and the tail of a scorpion. That's also all I'm going to read. Do more research. Moke, M-O-K-E. The moke is a silver green lizard reaching up to 10 inches in length and is found throughout Britain and Ireland. You have to do more research on that. Moon calf, M-O-O-N-C-A-L-F. The moon calf is an intensely shy creature that emerges from its burrow only to the full moon. Again, all I'm gonna read, uh, Mert lap, M-U-R-T-L-A-P. The Mertlap is a rat-like creature found in coastal areas of Britain. Do more research on it if you want to know more. And the last one here is called Merpeople. How many of you guys have heard of Merpeople? Um, wiggle your booty if you have. Ah, uh, some of you may have heard as mermaids. Some of you may have heard as mer, um, mermen or sirens or selkies or marrows kind of cousins related of sorts. Mer people exist throughout the world, though, they're, though they vary in appearance almost as much as humans. Their habits and customs remain as mysterious as those of the centaur. You can look up what a centaur is too. Though those wizards who have mastered the language of Mermish, that's the language they speak, Mermish, speak of highly organized communities varying in size according to habitat and some have elaborately constructed dwellings. Like the centaurs, the mer people have declined being status in favor of a beast classification. The oldest record of mer people were known as sirens in Greece, and it is, and it, it is in warmer waters that we find the beautiful mermaids so frequently depicted in muggle literature and paintings. Muggle, that's a funny word. The author of the Harry Potter series came up with that word to describe people who are not magical, muggles. Um, the Selkies of Scotland and the Marrows of Ireland. Hey, this book says they're less beautiful. Nope, I disagree. They are beautiful. And they share the love of music, which is common to all mer people. So I have a Celtic, Scottish and Irish background, and I love Selkies. Um, and I also love marrows, but I have a song here about selkies that I'm going to sing with you guys. <clears throat> I'm not going to teach it, but you can learn it by playing this video over and over again. It goes, laughter and love is the selkie's way. Laughter and love is the rites of day. Laughter and love is the selkie's way. Laughter and love and the bride. Day. The Celts and the Selkies and the Marrows love it.
love the dance. Get out your scarves, get out your mer tails, get out your fun, fancy clothes and start dancing with me. We swim in the seas and we lounge in lagoons. We swim with the whales and dance beneath the moon. The mirror's our sister, Kana is our mother. The sea is our home and the god our brother. Laughter and love is the spell he ring. Laughter and love and the brightness of day.
you don't have to love masks. You don't have to love anything. There's everyone has their own opinion. Um, it's just important to know that some people wear masks for fun because they do find it fun. Just like some people like vanilla ice cream and some people don't like vanilla ice cream. They only like chocolate and some people don't like ice cream at all. Right? So it's okay. Some people like masks. Some people don't. And so you can just tell someone if you don't like masks. No, oh, thank you. I don't like that. Especially if it's a mask for fun. Sometimes though, we need masks for our health. And that's what this is for. This is a mask that sometimes doctors will wear. Will wear. You'll see people working in hospitals or people working around taking care of sick people might wear this. Also, especially recently, um, more people might be wearing it now, even if they're not sick. Here's a reason. Let's look at this. First, I'll put it on me, and then we'll talk about what we could use a mask for. So, this has a little bendy thing at the top. I put that on my nose. I wrap the loop of the rubber bands around my ears. And then sometimes it fogs up my glasses, so I try to push the mask up higher so it doesn't fog up my glasses. There we go. So I have this mask on. If you've noticed, where does this mask cover? Yeah, does it cover my eyes? No. Does it cover my ears? No. Does it cover my nose? Yes. Does it cover my mouth? Yes. So this mask does a good job of covering the secretions that come out of my nose and mouth. Now, what on earth is that? <clears throat> How many of you guys have a baby at home? How many of you guys have a brother or sister at home? How many of you guys have ever visited a preschool or ever been to a preschool or a daycare? And how many of you guys have ever seen little ones going, uh, 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 and then spit comes out or snot comes out and it sprays just like this does out of our mouth and nose. You may not be able to see it, but it's sprayed and it's fallen on everything. When I do this, if you have a squirt bottle at home, you can try this. If you, you can't, maybe you can't even see the sprays, but afterwards you can feel it on your arms because this is water. The snot and the spit and the germs that come out of our nose and mouth, you may not see. They might be and mostly are invisible. You might not even feel them dropping on you, but they are. So oftentimes we wear these masks, especially right now you'll see people wearing them to protect their face. Yes, Tank? Are you gonna go for a walk with us? Yeah, yeah. What would you look like if you had a mask on? Can you sit down next to me and try it or you wanna go back in your bed? You wanna sit down next to me? That would be really silly to put a mask on a dog, but that's what it would look like on a, on a dog over their nose and mouth. Okay, sorry, that's it. Thank you for being a good helper. I appreciate that. So masks can keep um, our germs from spreading to someone else. Speaking of germs and medicine, let's talk about this. We are gonna talk about our temperature. When we are feeling good, we have a normal temperature. Our bodies like this, our, our bodies like homeostasis. Can you say that word? Homeostasis. That means they like things to be consistent. They like the temperature to be consistent. We don't go up too high, we don't go down too low. How many of you guys know what the normal resting body temperature is? Okay, do you know? You wanna hop in here? All right, well, tank hops in, you guys think about it. You ready? Let's say it out loud together. One, two, three, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That is our normal resting body temperature. Older kids, your job is to research what is the normal resting body temperature, not measured in Fahrenheit, but in centigrade, Celsius. So what is the normal resting body temperature in Celsius? Now, 98.6 is kind of a roundabout. Some people are a little lower, some people are a little higher, never more than two degrees of a change from that. Um, also, sometimes in the early morning, our temperature's a little lower, and sometimes in the evening, our temperature goes up a little higher, which is often why fevers spike more at nighttime, just so you parents know that. Um, but kids, our temperatures pretty much stay just about the same, usually around 98.6. Now, 
if you end up getting, if you get a fever, you know what that's called? Pyrexia. You say it. Pyrexia. Nice. A fever is also another big word for fever is pyrexia. That means your temperature is going up, 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 above 98.6. But why? Maybe we should have done this on Wednesday. What, why? But we're doing it on Monday because it's about medicine. So, there are things that exist outside of our body. Exogenous factors. Those can be viruses and bacteria and lots of other things. Temperature also has, um, our temperatures can rise and fall for many other reasons than just this. Uh, this is just one we're talking about today. So our temperature can go up um, due to exogenous factors like viruses and bacteria. Do you see how they have different shapes? We are going to talk another video about the form or the shape of viruses and bacteria and how that helps their function. For instance, the form or the shape of a wheel is circular, which helps it function of spinning and rolling and moving. Now, if you were trying to have the function of stability, like building a house, would you build a house on a wheel? No, because we want stability and a nice square or a triangle that has good stability. But a wheel or a circle, the form of that is good for movement and rolling. Similarly, viruses have different structures that are good for different functions. But we'll talk about that, same as bacteria. But in short, we have mostly viruses and bacteria and other things that are exogenous factors. And if they come into our nose or our mouth or our eyes or our ears or orifices, things that they can enter into, usually it's more eyes, nose, and mouth, then our body's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's a foreign invader here. We have these special things, um, I'm just going to call them B cells and T cells right now. And they kind of live in our body and they're like our watch guards. And they're like, are you healthy? Good. Do you belong here? Good. Do you belong here? Good. But when they notice a virus or a bacteria that's foreign, that's exogenous and doesn't belong in endogenous, does not belong into our body, then these, uh, are you ready for this word? Pyrogens. You ready? Pyrogens. Pyrogens are released and they go, hey, hey, there's something here. And a pyrogen is released. And a pyrogen travels, travels, travels up into this place in our um, in our brain, which is called the hypothalamus. And in the hypothalamus, it's like a thermostat. You know, you turn the temperature up or you turn the temperature down. Usually they like it just the same. But when a pyrogen says, hey, there's an invader, there is a virus or bacteria that is in here, and we recognize it. The, py the pyrogen runs up to the hypothalamus and turns up the thermostat so that we have higher temperature in our body. Our bodies don't fight things with snowballs. Our bodies don't fight things with water guns. Our bodies do not fight invaders with um, pillow fights. They fight them with heat. Because how many of you guys have ever been trapped in a super hot room or stayed in a car maybe when you were traveling and the sun is shining on you and it's hot and it's hot and hot? Yeah, most living things don't like things that are too hot or too cold. We like them just right. Same thing with our body. Same thing with viruses and bacteria. They have a different temperature range than our bodies do, but it's the same thing. We like it just right and they like it just right. So if they start to invade and our, and our um, T cells and, and B cells see them, they go pyrogens to the rescue and the pyrogens run up to the hypothalamus and that turns up the thermostat in our body and we get pyrexia or a fever. So, oh, and the, this eye thing, how many of you guys know what the red circle with the line through it means? That means no, that means don't. And that means that we can't see these. We can't see viruses or bacteria. They're invisible. There are other ways that our body detects it, but we can't see it with our naked eye. Now, maybe in a microscope, you can see it. But with our naked eye, we can't see it. So what can we do? How can we protect ourselves from all of these um, exogenous factors around us from getting into our body? 
One thing we can do, we wash our hands. I'm sure you guys have all heard the happy birthday song from Washington. Let's practice it now. We're going to practice washing our hands. So we rub, uh, happy birthday to you. We get our backs to our hands. Happy birthday to you. We get between our fingers. Happy birthday, happy birthday. And then we go in circles. Happy birthday. Get all our fingers. Day and our thumb to you. And then rinse, 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 rinse. And we don't touch the sink again afterwards. We turn it off with our elbow or grab a towel and turn it off. The other thing to remember when you're washing your hands, we don't need the water on full blast. <laughs> okay, there's nothing really wrong with it, but it's nice to conserve our water. So we can just turn it on at regular speed and then wash our hands. One thing we can do is wash our hands. A second thing we can do to help our bodies is to do the super cop. Oh, I forgot my cape again. So we can wear a cape on our back and it's like a superhero and you go do do when they go fly off and the cape flies around them. That's what we can do with a super cop. We go do 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 <coughs> and then we super cop into our elbow. We don't touch that. And ideally, if it's your skin, you wash it off afterwards. If it's a shirt, you can just wash it at night and take it off. But that way our germs stay there and don't spray through the air and other people. So we can wash our hands. We can do a super cough. And one thing we can do right now, especially during cold and flu season and when there's an especially strong virus out there right now, which we'll talk about later on another day, COVID-19, um, we can take our temperature, take it in the morning, take it in the evening, and then you know what your average temperature is, where your just right is. And then if it goes a little too high, then your parents know and they can start treating you. Because you might be, your body might be having pyrexia and might be wanting to fight off any invaders. And there's lots of other healthy things you can do with that. Chinese medicine is good for that too. Um, and drink water. Drinking water is great for our body. Our body loves water. And there's an abbreviation at the bottom. How many of you guys knew the chemical abbreviation for water is H2O? If you didn't, now you know. H2O. We'll talk more about that on another day when we do more chemistry stuff. But that is the abbreviation for water. That is what we learned about Western medicine and fevers, pyrexia today. You can learn some of those new words that you've learned today and you can share that. That's what I meant. You can share those new words. Pyrogens and pyrexia. Pyro uh, means fire, and fire is hot, so that gives you a hint. So one more thing I wanted to show you guys today. Actually, before I show you this, we have to do something fun. <coughs> it's about our bodies. It's really not necessarily about medicine. It's just fun, and we got to be silly and fun sometimes. It's the belly button song. I'm not going to sing all of it. Uh, there's lots of verses, and I can't remember who made it up, so I'll have to get back with you on that. But we'll start with our hands here. Um, Neil, right on our belly button. Let's drum. Not too loud. Good drum. Okay. Here we go. Belly button, belly button. You guys do that. Belly button, belly button. Good. Here we go. Oh, my belly button. You guys do it. Good, one more time. Oh, my belly button, I love you. Your turn. Yeah, we're going to put it all together now. Belly button, belly button. Oh, my belly button. Oh, my belly button, I love you. Belly button, belly button. Oh, my belly button. Oh, my belly button, I love you. All right, we're going to keep singing it. You ready? Belly button, belly button, oh my belly button, oh my belly button, I love you. Belly button, belly button, oh my belly button, oh my belly button, I love you. Now we're gonna do it underwater. Fish her underwater. Belly button, belly button, oh my belly button, oh my belly button, I love you. Belly button, belly button, oh my belly button. Oh, I love you. All right, now we're going to do it. Belly, 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 belly,
Now we're gonna be really loud. We'll talk about being loud in a minute, but we'll just do it now for fun. Make sure everyone around you is okay with that. Like Tank, he's okay with loud noises, but some animals aren't, and some siblings aren't. Some people have a hard time with their ears. They just need to, just like we don't wanna bonk our bodies physically, we need to respect people's sound space too. But if you're in a spot that you can yell, you can do the yelling. And if you're not, you can remember it. And you can go do a yelling some other place that is safe to yell. Because it's always important to have space that you can yell into. Okay, here we go. Belly button, belly button. Oh, my belly button. Oh, my belly button. I love you. Belly button, belly button. Oh, my belly button. Oh, my belly button. I love you. medicine that I wanted to talk about today. It has to do with the uh, pestle and mortar. Remember I was talking about some older um, herbal preparations, um, also Chinese medicine. This is a toolbox that is used um, in Japanese medicine. It's called a shonishen kit. How many of you guys have seen a shonishen kit like this before or been treated by practitioners with shonishen before? I bet a lot of you actually have. I utilize this on my clients as well. I do Shoni Shen treatments on my clients. So there's lots of fun tools. There's one tool here that's my favorite. I call it the jellyfish. <laughs> it looks like a jellyfish, right? It's got like the little pinnacle and it's just got the bottom. It doesn't sting like a jellyfish, don't worry. Um, and mm, the short way of saying it is like, Chinese medicine is like constellation, like the stars. There's lots of little pathways, like rivers or maps on the body of specific points that are really helpful. Um, and so you can, one of them is LI4. So you can kind of on the spot. You can also, if you ever get a treatment with Shonishin, um, you can bring a stuffed animal with you. And while the practitioner is tap, 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 on your spot, you can find the spot, you can pick out a tool that you like out of here, um, if you want to use the jellyfish, then you can do tap, 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 tap on your stuffed animal too. And then they can get a treatment and you can be a practitioner and you can be a treatment and the practitioner can work on you too. So that is a Shonishin kit and this is used for medicine as well. Different types of medicine are good for different things. And one thing that's lovely about Chinese medicine and East Asian medicine and Japanese medicine is that um, it's really good preventative. It's really good to keep our bodies healthy so that we don't get sick. Um, and so that our immune system, our fighters inside, are strong enough to um, defend the body from those exogenous pathogens that are trying to come in. They go, nope, we gotcha. We're protecting the body here. Sometimes those pathogens are too strong and we get sick. But sometimes our body's strong enough and can push them out. One thing that we can do here, in addition to the washing hands, soup for cough, and uh, taking the temperature and drinking water, I have a special one that Chinese medicine does. We can actually help nourish our lungs and just give our lungs a little extra love. So what we're gonna do here, pretend like we're flying like a super person, a super man, a super girl, a super person, if you're gender non-binary, and you've got your arm here. We don't want to stick our hands in our armpits. Thank you. We don't want to stick our hands on our collarbone too hard. Right in the middle. And we're going to rub kind of like a kitty cat. Meow. How many of you guys have had cats at home and they paw on you like this? Meow. Meow. We're going to have our paw here and we're going to rub in circles. We're going to rub. Meow. One. Super person, not the armpit, not the shoulder, not the collarbone, ouch, right in between. Now, because we just talked about the Japanese Shonishin kit, we're going to count in Japanese. So, each, ni, san, shi, go, rope, seech. Hutch, coo, chew. We just counted a 10. Let's try.
try that again. Yeesh. You gotta repeat after me. I'm gonna say it and then I'll point and you guys say it. Yeesh. Yeesh. Yee. Sun. Go. Broke. Seech. Hatch. Coo. Go rope seech got you. Coo. 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 I think I did that wrong. Let's try that again. Yeech. Knee. Sun. She. Go. Rope. Seech. Hatch. Coo. Jew. There we go. Sorry I did that wrong. See, I make mistakes too. It's okay. We all learn. And because I made the mistake, we got to do it again. Perfect. Well, I hope you enjoyed our session today. Um, we did Monday medicine. Monday, April the 6th, we talked about our medicine. Your homework is one, to do uh, some the magical beasts. Come up with some pictures, some nice creative visualizations, movement, sculptures, whatever that is for you. Reports um, about mythical beasts. Um, two, your homework two is I want you to be, if you're, if you're younger, I want you to be practicing making this letter M. Get some sticks, get some pencils, get some, oh, anything that's long and straight. You can even write in the dirt. Practice those letter M's, okay? And three, there's a game I have for you. I have a version for the little guys and I have a version for the big guys. The version for the little guys is just to start thinking of M, M words. Very little guys, let's just practice with the letters. Mm, once you have to get comfortable practicing with the letters, let's practice um, making mm songs. So, M is for monkey, mm, mm, mm. And then the next person has to think of another M word. M is for male duck, mm, mm, mm. Good, and then you go back and forth, taking turns thinking of an M word. For the next level up on that game, I have a rhythm game for the next level up. For those of you who know M words, you don't have to think too hard about it, but you're ready for the next level. You go, M is, or, um, oh yeah, sorry, you go, tap, 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 M is for monkey. Tap, next person, M is for mailbox. Next person, M is for mommy. Next person, M is, oh, I forgot, I didn't do it in the rhythm. Ah, you lose a point, and then you keep going, and you see who ends up with the most points at the end. Everybody else gets one point, the person who forgot doesn't get a point. And then whoever at the end has the most points wins. Next level up to that um, is you have to pick a room in the house, a place you can go to, like the beach or the zoo, um, or another category, like at the hospital, or at the zoo, or at the doctor, or at the ice cream store, um, and then you have to think of those words. So, for instance, I would say, if we were doing in the kitchen, I'd go, M is for melon, because melon can be in the kitchen. So the next person goes, and you keep this rhythm going. You know, break the rhythm. M is for melon. M is for, uh, I couldn't think of another one. So that person wouldn't get a point and the other guys would. Or if somebody says something that doesn't make sense, like M is for ma maps. There's no maps in the kitchen. No, not part of the category. So that's a game you guys can play too. So play your M games, whatever that is for you guys. Oh, the M games with the M is for maps, M is for monkey. That game is really good to play with your grandparents on the phone. That's really good for their brains too. So um, parents can be able to play that with you, other siblings can play that with you, and definitely grandparents can play that with you. All right, well, uh, three homeworks are the mythical creatures, um, practicing writing the letter M's and playing the, and then playing the M games. And I think there was something else, but my brain can't remember it right now. Your job is to remember that. Um, play those games, have fun, and I look and share the information that we learned today. All those new words you learned: pyrexia, pyrogens, 
um, all these new words, you know, the Shoni Shin Kit. Share all of these with your family um, and spread the knowledge. Now's a good time to be learning. All right, have a good day, guys. Bye.